So March was the month that my GP teacher gave my class a rather interesting assignment to do. She told us to come up with a response beginning with the words, I wonder. And so being the kind of smart addict I am, and also since I was kind of running out of time to send in a suitable answer, I sent in this. And so what was surprising to me was how coincidental this query of mine was in line with the theme of this event, which leads me to introduce to you this key topic on wondering, or more specifically, functional curiosity. One may say that we need to carry a sense of wonder in life in order to take chances, and that to me is the spirit of functional curiosity that lies in the grey area between chance and curiosity. And it can be defined as a sense of inquisitiveness, kind of wondering about everything around us, and then putting your speculations to the test. Personally, curiosity has been of great importance to me as it has opened my eyes to a plethora of new discoveries and insights. I was born in the UK and raised there for the first few years of my life before being whisked off to Singapore at the age of 10, where my family now stays. So I'm actually considered maybe quite lucky, you may think, because in a sense, being a dual citizen allows me to analyze the differences in how the East and the West view fostering curiosity especially in students. So one of the starkest differences that I have noticed between the Singapore and UK education system is that of the importance they put in play. And usually whenever I remember play, I always think of the time during the Christmas period when I was young. At that time, I was, yep, there I am, over there, that small little shepherd boy over there. Um, but when I was young, I performed in a Christmas play. It was about the nativity story. And it was a very interesting role I played, the role of the shepherd, because it had very few lines to say. You know, just tending to silly sheep, nothing like that. But, you know, being an overachiever, I memorized the entire play and said every single line, even when it wasn't my turn to speak. And you might, you might be wondering to yourself the, the expression on my parents' faces when I did that. And now you may be thinking, what does this even have to do with curiosity? How does this even stay on topic? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because, in a sense, fostering curiosity was done to me in my UK environment through play, which encouraged fun. Fun through maybe role-playing, going through drama or in a play, or even having ample time to run about during recess. Because it frees the mind to think, to imagine, to run wild, when no one can stop you. No one can say that you are wrong in that moment. Play, which I had a lot of in the UK, encouraged experimentation, hands-on activities that helped me to foster a keen sense of learning and ultimately curiosity. Well then, what about Singapore? Well, while the Singapore education system does have its merits, I mean, I would say that Usually, these three phrases, standardized testing, tuition, and enrichment classes, do describe it best compared to maybe going to a school play, going for drama, playing catch, or even having your teacher as your best friend. So, yes, it is true sometimes, but um, if you think about it for a minute, most of us would you will agree with me on the fact that the Singapore education system doesn't really build up the keenness of learning within us. And rather, it conforms us to certain educational standards that the country deems important to us. So, we're all familiar with this saying, curiosity killed the cat, but have we Singaporeans taken this saying too far in our general unwillingness to consider new and alternative perspectives or even experiment with novel ways of doing things? A closer examination of the Singapore education system magnifies the absence of curiosity. Well, think about it. We prioritize knowledge accumulation over questioning how things work. Day in, day out, in our classrooms, we sit down, we write, we memorize, we practice, we toil. And what do we do this for? Guess what? It's to get the right answers. Now don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm happy, it's not that I'm not happy that 
Singapore has given me the chance to have another take on education and how it should be run. Now think about it for a minute. Isn't it more important to intentionally cultivate curiosity in us students rather than having all of these kind of restrictions on our learning, allowing for exploration and allowing for failure? So now what? What's next for us? Well, compared to other countries like Finland, who in a sense take education in different perspectives, we want to learn from them okay, through their less is more approach. In Finland, Finnish education, it harps a lot on minimal, minimal uh, school hours, minimal assessment, and also more breaks. And more breaks to do what? More breaks to actually take time to reflect about what they have learned. You know? Take time to understand what has been taught in class. And this is very important because the Finnish education system actually helps to emphasize on things like critical skills, analytical skills that help us in our learning. Well, one thing that the Finnish education system does starkly different from us in Singapore is the fact that they are able to go out in the natural environment to learn about everything from simple things like arts and craft to more complex matters like science and math. And they're also given time to have ownership for their learning through self-directed projects, which foster a genuine love for learning and, func and fosters functional curiosity in our students. So for us Singaporeans, what can we do? Allow me to share three suggestions for us. Firstly, we need to reflect. Now the act of reflection can usually be associated to deep deliberation or meditation, sitting down with OM for like hours and hours. But if you think about it for a minute, I mean, for myself, over the nine years of experience that I've had in student leadership, reflection has taught me this very important thing. That is, to understand the world better, we need to reflect. Especially with our hectic, fast-paced lifestyles, we often forget to reflect. But easy things like having a Thanksgiving journal, like what my school principal shared about the other day, or even staring into blank space are all good forms of reflection. But you may be thinking, what do these do to us? Well, by reflecting on an issue, it helps us to question the whys and hows of anything that we think of, and it opens our mind to this web of thought that snaps our curious nature into action in order to find out more about something. Secondly, we need to keep questioning the things around us and never feel satisfied with the way things work. Now, intellectual skeptics like Aristotle, the Greek, Greek philosopher, or Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, understand that by using their skill in intellectual skepticism as a form of functional curiosity, we are able to think and take on new and alternative perspectives that help us to generate thoughts into understanding everything around us. Now, this here may apply to us differently, especially for different groups of people. For young people like myself need to take this procedure of thinking. Firstly, we need to identify the issue at hand which we want to think about and what's so contentious about it. This is because by having a clear goal on what you want to think about, it helps you to be focused and stay on topic when you're thinking about whatever you want to uh, feel that is significant to you. Second of all, find out why the issue that you are thinking of is so significant. This is because if you think about it, if you're trying to wonder over pointless things like that are not even related to how you feel, then wouldn't it be a waste of time to think over such pointless things? And last of all, we need to consult others. Find people of the same interest as you, and find people that have more expertise as you, so that when you go and inquire with them, you are able to gain knowledge, because knowledge is power, and knowing more about the issue at hand allows you to better understand and better appreciate what you're thinking about. And now for those of us who are older, I haven't forgotten about you. For those of us who are older, we want to take this different perspective of thinking. I mean, for this first step, it's kind of the same, where you need to find out what's so contentious about the issue. But then the second thing that you might need to do is you, you might want to reflect about any events in your life that have helped to shape your thinking of the issue. Think about how your past has helped you create a better understanding of what 
you are thinking of right now. And then lastly, you need to go and experiment on your theories. Dare to speak up. Dare to challenge the way things work. Dare to go out, look at the systems right in the eye and challenge them. Why? Because despite, it, despite maybe it being a failure or even if it's a success, you will still come out of the experience learning something new from it. The last suggestion I want to give to you is that we need to be a giraffe. Yes, you may find this very weird, but just like how the giraffe is tall, uh, slender, and easily identifiable, like maybe myself, um, <laughs> yes, um, we need to stand out from others. We need to take a wider perspective of the world. And we need to have the willingness to learn new things. I mean, though our conservative society may suppress our attraction to learning, we still need to have this curiosity and we still need to stand out from others in society so that we are able to stand out to make a change and to understand about everything that is going on around us. And so now, after talking so much about curiosity, how we need to be curious, let me bring you all back to where we are right now, in a tech conference, if that wasn't obvious enough. Um, the other day I was reading about the history of tech and I came across its motto, ideas worth spreading. And it got me thinking that we as young people, youths or whatever society may want to call us, have actually been given the opportunity, the chance to change the systems that our world is built on. We are living now in a new age of technology and innovation. And it has empowered us to stand up for what we believe in. Most of us know that social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube have been giving us the chance to express ourselves in a way that we can't even imagine. And also, one would assume that nowadays, soft skills are more important than hard skills. Let me give you an example like, like innovation over theory and likewise, curiosity over always getting the right answers. And so, I'd like to leave you all with this quote closing that I heard of during a TED talk that I watched the other day on education and creativity by Sir Ken Robinson and this is what he had to say that if you're not willing to be wrong you'll never come up with anything original we are all unique in our own ways and so let's try to use our unique and curious minds to change the world thank you